Well, we lagged. We're off. This is Steve Sutton. Sutton Death in the booth with you guys. For the hot seat match, Tim Perry versus, versus Francisco Cabral. Tim Perry needing 10 games, ranked an A player. Francisco, Francisco Cabral ranked a B, needing 8 games. Tim wins the lag and he will be breaking off. Well, wow. He hit the break good, but unfortunately the cue ball tracked right into the side pocket. So Francisco had a ball in hand, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six. He made three balls and a cue ball on the break. Got a problem here. As you see down here with 7 9, that's going to be a problem. Fram might look to play safe just because it's such a tough run, such a tough run out. Right behind the 7 9. That's a nice shot. It's a nice hit by Tim. It's going to leave Fran a shot. Let's see here. Wow. <laughs> Fran obviously wanted to play that safe. <laughs> and he actually made it in the side pocket. And now he's behind the nine ball. Nice. Nice hit there by Francisco. Very clean hit. Left him a shot on the four ball. Clean shot. Well, he's got the six ball here. Seven ball. Still a little interesting, though. That's a nice shot on the six. Well, what's he going to do? Actually, he's probably going to clip the right side of that seven ball. Just like that. That's a great shot by Tim. Very nice. Seven nine definitely broken up now. I see Tim probably just rolling the seven ball in the corner and maybe coming above the nine, or is he gonna try to draw? Now he's gonna roll. He's gonna try to roll it above the nine. He probably wants to get about the middle of the table here. 
just like that. I shot. I didn't want to do that. He obviously wanted to just roll above the nine and play the nine in the corner. And I just looked above me the Jason Shaw Karen Gore match. They're showing on the big screen. That's a great shot by Tim. Nice bank shot. Tim Perry draws first blood in this match. One nothing against Francisco Cabral. Anyway, so this is our featured match. Well, I said, like I said, looking back, Jason Shaw is five zero in front of Karen Gore, and I believe that's a race to nine. Francis go to break. Wow. He hit that break pretty good, but he came up dry. With no clear path to the one, he decides to push out. Shot by Francisco. Not making it any easier on himself. Now playing the two ball all the way up table with the two with the cue ball on the rail. But he's got a pretty steady stroke. Should be able to just roll this in the corner. See what he does here. He can roll it inside, actually. The only problem with rolling it in the side is your cue ball is going to track right toward that top left corner. So he's going to take some time on this one. So he tried to put some. Wow, try to put some juice on it and fire it in that corner and somehow that cue ball found that side pocket. I'm telling you what, man, that, that cue ball, that cue ball can find the side pocket in the strangest of ways. Tim was wood ball in hand, made the two ball, he's shooting the three. I think he's looking at a four nine here. I don't think that four plays, and I think he landed pretty good on it too. Let's take a look at the overhead. Yeah, he's eyeing this one up. He wants to cut off all of Fran's oxygen <laughs> and give him no breathing room. Oh, and he just overcut it, and he almost got behind the five, but the nine ball actually still got in the way, and little uh, Tim put his hand up and said, you know, sorry, man, I apologize, I caught a roll. The nine ball got in the way. Other matches, well, let's see here. Let's read this here. Is he gonna mass save this or is he gonna. Wow. Well, he came with a shot there. 
fired it right in the corner. And actually he can play this five in the corner. Maybe a hair of inside to bump the nine and use the nine as a buffer. Just like that. And well that's what we wanted to do, to hold for the six ball. But he didn't really leave an easy shot. I think Tim would play safe here behind the seven. Yeah, he hit that one good. He hit that one good and he knows it. We're looking at kicking this one off the back rail. Possibly po possibly pocketing the ball and the five ball in the side pocket. He just missed it. We're going to bring Tim back to the table with ball in hand. Five in the side. Six ball in the corner. Now where does he want to land on the eight? You want to be careful here because the nine ball can become a big ball here also. I think he's going to top it two rails. Come out. One, two rails, that's what we wanted to do, just a little shy on position. But he's still okay, I mean, you can play a safe off of this. Smart shot, leaves the eight ball, middle of the rail, and I believe he also put the nine ball in the play. Yes, he did. Nine ball... I think actually it's it's kind of hard to tell from my angle, um, even from the overhead. He may have a cut on this. I can't tell. And he's he's Q and level, so he must be able to. It was kind of hard to tell from that shot what he was trying to do there. He could have been trying to cut it. He could have been trying to back kick it real first in the corner, the bank. He just missed, so I'm not quite sure. Anyway, the result was Tim back to the table on the eight. And just missed the eight. So Fran's gonna be shooting at the shooting at the eight ball. The only problem with this is I believe he'll be jacked up over the nine, which makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, see how he's jacked up over the nine ball like that. Put it right in though. A little angle here on this nine ball. He just hit that like a hanger. <laughs> nice shot. I was wondering if he was going to do that, if he was just going to roll it in, but there's my answer. Francisco ties the match, but one apiece. Tim Perry to break. Buzzsaw, and I don't. I don't think I actually explained the rules beforehand. This obviously this is the Bud Light tournament. It's a handicap tournament. A's go to ten, B's go to eight, C's go to six. Playing alternate break format. Crack your own. And this is the hot seat match. And. And Sutton Death, Steve Sutton, in the commentary box with you guys. Tim just made a great break there.
the I think he jumped over a piece of the four ball and he did a he used his break cue and did a full cue jump. Which I cannot do that. I don't know if it's my cue or just my my mechanics, but I cannot jump a full cue yet. I can kick I can kick fairly well though, so I rely on that. Anyway. Tim left ran a shot. On the one, you put the one on the side. Two in the corner. Two leaves on the three. The Reaper 12. Yes, it is nine ball on the spot. Which I gotta say, if you're not used to playing that, it, it looks kind of weird with the rack being up higher than what it usually is. I mean, you're looking at the rack probably being, I don't know, maybe six inches to a foot higher than what it usually is, as opposed to the one ball being on the spot. Frame in, nice shot on the two. I thought he almost got, I thought he actually got hooked on the three ball, but he did not. It was close, but didn't. So he's shooting the four. How about I just shoot this four on the side and come up one rail? Just like that for the six. The six, and he's got the seven and the nine. Down the center of the table, and he came down nicely for it. that a little bit harder than he wanted to, I think. He bumped the nine to the rail. And he was still cutting up the rail, but I'm sure he probably wanted to come above the nine and play the, the nine in the same pocket, but so, yeah, I was just going to say he's a pretty good ball maker, and that was a heck of a shot. Francisco goes up two to one. And Francisco's break. Let's see what else we got here. Looking around the room. We got Rich Minichello playing Stan McLean. I think he's up 2 nothing in that match. And Jared D'Amalia playing Pete Bowman. It looks like it's 6-6. Six, six. And Jared is a B in this tournament. So Jared's going to 8. And Pete's going to 10. Also looking around the room. Looks like Tom D'Alfonso, shorty. Just walked in. Made an appearance. Let's see here. Francisco to break. Put a lot of power into that one. He lost the cue ball. Let's give Tim ball in hand. One in the corner nicely. Two ball. He's got nice angle here. Nice shot. He's really hitting the balls crisp into the pocket. the three. Four ball if I just roll this in the corner and probably play the five ball in the same pocket. Just like so.
Oh, the Reaper, I know who you are now, Rob. Thank you, sir, I appreciate it. I tend to call myself Upstate Al's, Upstate Al's protege. <laughs> He's taught me. That's and so it's always, it's always fun doing this kind of stuff. So Tim put a great safe there. I think he's looking at kicking. As you can see, he froze that to the eight ball. So, so friend. I think that nine, that, that's really close. He's looking at kicking at two rails, but I think that nine ball is really close to being in the way. Oh, nice hit. Nice hit, and you really didn't leave anything easy for Tim. I think it's actually... Is he gonna stun this? Nice shot. Nice shot. Come back up for the nine. Nine ball right in the corner for the buzzsaw. Two to two. Two to two. Tim going to Tenton. Francisco going to eight. Tim will be breaking. Pretty good break, but he failed to pocket a ball on the break. And Francisco obviously didn't like po possibly trying to pocket the one and have a shape on the two balls. They decided to play safe behind the the two and the eight. And it looks like I kick this maybe two rails. One, two, and just missed it. That's a nice try. It was a very tough kick. Nice safety there. Real nice safety by Francisco. Tim's looking to see if he has the one rail. Let's take a look at the overhead real quick. Yeah, I mean, he might be able to go one rail with spin. One rail with some right spin. And the one and just missed it. Friend does play really good saves. I've played with him, practiced with him. 
I think I've played him a couple matches also. He plays pretty good saves. And um, the three foul rule is in effect for this tournament. So, obviously the rule you tell your opponent he's on too. And, uh... If friend does not run this rack out, Tim will be on too. It looks like he looks like he from that from this angle he's gonna go for three. Try get him under the four. Wow. And there you go. As Francisco just pointed out to Tim, you're on two. So Tim must make this hit. And he does. Nice hit. Nice hit, and he got safe behind the two ball. This two rails and he made the eight. Made the eight. I don't know if you can see. Let's see if it will be over right here. Yeah, I think that nine ball is blocking a piece, so out comes the jump cue. Jumped and oh. <laughs> well, he jumped, made the one, and now he's behind the nine ball. So I look for him to go two rails. One, two rails. Hit the back of the two. And... Made a good hit, and I think Tim is hooked behind the six here. I think Tim... Just eyed up the cross-side bank. That's exactly what I did. And that was a nice shot. And... Oh! Let's go now with ball in hand. Three ball on the corner. Four ball on the corner. Not really a whole lot of problems here. I mean, just any kind of angle on the five, so you're not shooting the six off the rail. Pretty good angle. Pretty good angle here. He'll probably actually, I don't think he'll hold this up. I think he'll shoot the five and come across table for the six yeah. in the same pocket. Or he'll kill it and play it. Don't nope, game across like I said. I don't know. The other the other option was to try to kill it and play it in the opposite corner, but not so six in the corner. Draw it one rail. Seven in the corner, he'll probably follow this. 
He doesn't have a lot of angle here, so he'll follow it. One, one, maybe one rail back up. Yeah, one rail. Nice shot by Francisco Cabral. No. Wow. Well, Tim wins that rack. Score three to two. That one caught me, caught me by, a little, by a little by surprise. I thought Fran was straight in on that nine. He must have had some angle to do that. Tim kind of, Tim kind of relieved. Because, you know, any kind of game like this is big. You know, a friend wins that game, and now all of a sudden he needs five to ten to eight. It's, it's pretty big. Instead, Tim wins the game, and now it's a seven to six race. Fran made a good break on that break. Made a ball. He's got a shot on the one. He's got to kind of watch out for the... He'll probably have to maybe like put some right spin on this to come two rails up. Yeah. He tried to put two rails up to avoid that three. And three balls three ball still got in the way. Three balls is going to be a big ball. I'm looking at a 1-4 combination here. Part of the pocket. Nice combination. Great speed. Hit that shot nicely. Another nice shot. Should look at the angle here on this three. I think he has, yeah, he's putting some top on. He's got a little bit of angle to slide down for the five. Nice shot. So we can see if the six ball is frozen. Looks like from here that it is. And it, that's actually not a good thing for Tim because if that ball is frozen, it's actually easier to make it if it's frozen because you can spin it real first. And uh, I just saw behind me that Jason Shaw just defeated Karen Core in the hot seat match 9-2. to two. And that's what I meant about spinning the ball in like that. That's a great shot. Um, nine to two. So now Jason Shaw is in the finals of Turning Stone to win, I believe, his fourth Turning Stone. Guys playing unreal. Let's see what Fran does here. Let's see what angle he has. Yeah, that nine ball. Looks like it could be in the way. Well, he played that pretty good. Just rolled right past it. He's got a little bit of angle here, but... A 
shot. That ties the match. A three apiece. Tim's break. You know, the thing I like about Fran, too, is, you know, he seems very centered. He takes, you know, he allows what the table gives him. You know, if he gets a little bit out of position, he just takes it and shoots it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously easier said than done, you know, to not dwell on things and not dwell on shots, but you can't change the past. It is what it is. You can only learn from it. And Tim broke him and went right in the side pocket. Oops. Tim broke, and it looks like Fran's eyeing up the 1 9 here. Fran eyeing up the 1 9. And he just drilled it. Nice combination by Francisco Cabral as now he goes up in the match four to three. Goes up four to three. And like I said with this handicap format, Fran only needs four games to ten seven. Jared one. So, and while right before Fran breaks, I will just update update everyone. Jared Malia defeats Pete Bowman by a score of looks like eight seven. Breaks dry. Tim got no shot, and I think he pushed. And Fran said, "Okay, we can have it back." It's behind the two. So that would mean that Jared Malia plays Mike Pettit. Race to eight. See what happens here. I think Princess goes and looks at two rails, one, two. He almost went one, two, three, four rails and hit it, but the five ball got in the way. So we'll give Tim Perry a ball in hand on the one. I think I was doing that here. I played a shot. I played the nine ball in the corner and just felt comfortable. I hit it and scratched on the side. No reason. Just roll it. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, pretty much straight on this three ball. Not really a whole lot of problems here on this table. I think he can just, he's got angle here, he can just draw up a little bit. 
and then get right in the window, right between the eight and the six. And I think he got high enough. I think he's all right. A little smirk because I, <laughs> but I think he, you know, maybe he's not so sure. Maybe he's not high enough. I thought he was. Let's take a look. Take a look at the overhead. It's close. There you go. It's close. You just want to take an extra minute. Or an extra second, you know, just to be 100% sure it played. I think you should be okay here. You get the seven in the corner. Seven in the corner. Roll up one rail. Eight in the side. You just want to make sure that you're on the top side of the eight to come down for the nine. Just not too much. He needs to have to come with a shot here. Went a little too high. Not much, just a little. So, so what to do here? I mean, he could possibly try to cut this in the corner and spin the hell out of it, or heck out of it, not, probably not proper me to say it that way. Spin the heck out of it with inside English to come back down for the nine. And avoid the side pocket, but he, he doesn't like his options because the scratch is right there. If he catches this eight ball too full, he can... Possibly scratch. Taking his time on it. He's he was eyeing up that he was eyeing up that shot that I just said, but it's not an easy shot. I mean, maybe you play a safe here, but I don't even see an easy safety here. Maybe if you play safe, maybe you somehow find a way to get the eight ball down to the bottom rail. No, oh, he's playing there. Decision, decisions, decisions. No, oh, that was a safety. That's probably what he was better off doing. Went for a, the safe shot. As opposed to possibly missing it in the corner and selling out the rack. Because you definitely don't want to give Francisco any more momentum. You know, he's got four. So you want to try to hold him at bay if you can. It's a nice shot by... Nice smart shot by Francisco. Tim's gonna look and see. I think if this is frozen, like I said before, if it's frozen, it's an easier shot. Let's look at the overhead. From that view, it doesn't look like it's quite frozen, which makes it a lot harder, but I'm not sure. It's gonna depend on how Tim hits this. safe I guess really wasn't much else to do there I mean he left ran a shot in 
and he'll play in that corner. And if he makes it, he's got a natural lead to come up for the nine, but he's got to make this ball. And he did not, and where do you leave it? Nowhere easy. quite know if Tim, I think Tim got him. Very tough shot as well. Like he's, looks like he's mass saying here. That was a nice try by Francisco. Did not say it a little bit. Still not that easy though. I mean, Tim's got the shot in the side pocket, but. Nice shot. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh. oh. That was almost disastrous. <laughs> Well, what did I tell you before? That side pocket comes into play so often. And it's just, it, it, it's never welcomed. <laughs> and he did avoid it, and he's on the nine. And he puts down the nine. Ties it up for a piece. So, Tim Perry to break. break hit it pretty square he made the five ball on the side I don't think he has any aggressive option on the one might play safe here Shot by Francisco.
Nice shot by Francisco. Bump the seven ball. Got a shot on the six. I think he's gonna probably drop like two rail, yeah, two rails. It's a nice shot here on the seven. He doesn't want he doesn't want, he doesn't want too much angle here, but I think that's what he got. So I think he actually has to come back down to this bottom rail and come back up. Makes the position on the shot a little bit harder. And he played it cross side. Just gonna leave Tim. I think he just is just gonna cinch down, bear down, and make this. Looks like he's aiming top though. Yeah, he went top. Nice shot. And I think it's a little bit shorter than he wants. He probably wanted that cue ball to come up maybe another six inches to a foot. Be a little bit less, a little bit less angle. But shouldn't pose a problem. A shot. A little bit of a blind cut here on this nine ball. Take his time here. And he got it. Nice shot by the buzzsaw. Seems like you're going back and forth, back and forth here. So, five to four in favor of the buzzsaw, Tim Perry. Tim goes to 10, Francisco goes to 8. So right now it's a 5-4 race. Hit that break pretty good, pretty square. The cue ball got kicked a little and he dropped the 8 ball on the break. So he stays at the table. I don't think he has an offensive shot here. Tough shot. And Tim doesn't really have an easy shot either. Looks like he's going to play the 1 7 combo. Or he's just playing safe. Nice shot. He got behind the 4. Which he did.
Another nice shot by Tim. Four and the three in the side. Definitely a tight shot. He's gonna really bear down and just cinch it, make the ball. Nice shot. He's got almost the same shot on the five ball, depending on where he lands from the four. He needs some angle here from the five. Because he needs to get back to the six. Hmm. Now, uh, it's hard to tell if the six plays past the nine. By the way he shot that, I'm assuming it does play past the nine. Or if it doesn't play past the nine, he could have played a really good hook or safety behind the nine. But Fran's just going to one rail back up inside English. He kind of has almost the same angle here. From that shot, it looks like the sixth did play. Just rattled the seven ball. Ran over, cut the seven ball. Hard to tell if he got behind the nine. I think he did. Let's take a look at the overhead for a second. You know, it doesn't look like from this angle he got behind the nine. But I don't think he can cut this. That is a severe cut. And your cue ball will be flying because it's such a thin cut. Yeah, he's going to try to kick it in. And that's not a bad try. Didn't leave anything easy for Tim, and Tim's going to try to... Yeah, thin cut safe. Try to get that behind the nine, and not that time. Tim's have a wide open shot on the seven ball. Tim's eyeing up this nine ball to go up six to four. Hmm. 
just missed it. Well, it wasn't an easy shot. He didn't really leave a hang for Francisco either. Cuts it right in. And Fran is going to take his break. Both players allow a one minute break, one five minute break. Ties the matchup at five apiece. Minicello playing who is that? Stan McLean. And that's a ten six race. Rich wins that rack, so that puts him on the hill, I believe. Yep. He's on the hill 9-1 to one over there, so Rich needs 1 and Stan needs 5. And the other match, Mike Pettit versus Jared DeMalia. 3-1. So looks like oh, we got six players left. One, two, three, four, five, six players left. That's correct. And it looks like Turning Stone. Karen Core versus Earl Strickland. In that next match. friends on his break. Oh, he's coming back. Jim Perry to break. Buzzsaw. I heard a ball down. Six ball down on the break. And I bang the one kind of like a safe. This friend doesn't really have an easy shot here. Combo one eight. You just missed it. He ties up the one four though. table put two balls in an kind of awkward spot I 
Uh, did he get behind the two? I don't think. It's gonna, I think it's going to come out for him. Yep. He did it. So Fran did a shot on the one ball. And what a... Oh my. That was a good shot, but... <laughs> almost made the nine, but he's... Pretty easy. Two nine. So that means Francisco goes up one more game, six to five. So Francisco needing two games now, and Tim needing five. Francisco, pretty good break. Makes a two ball on the break. Look at the cue ball. Last ball rolling. Cue ball finds its way to the side pocket. because it looks like you're probably straight so you can probably just draw this straight back oh no we decided to follow it so I'm gonna play the cut here or is he gonna go behind the nine and play safe Wanted to play safe behind the nine, just missed the safe behind the nine. And the five and the six. Six hanging in the pocket, five ball. That was a nice shot. Not really a whole lot of problems here. Five, we can roll the five in the side. I would think you roll the five on the side, you play the seven ball on the opposite side. Yeah. Five on the side, seven on the side. He's got a little bit of angle here, but I think he could just. Actually, I wouldn't even slow roll this. I'd play this. Let your stroke out a little bit. Play the seven on the side, roll. The cue ball down to this, or down, roll the cue ball up to the top rail and back down for the eight. This one rail, just like that, natural position. Shot on the eight, and he's straight in on the nine ball. Wow, and Fran was straight in on the nine, and that's a big nine, and he's going to concede that nine ball. Tim Perry. So also in the background, um, Rich Minicello defeating Stan McLean at a score of nine to one.
So, getting back to our match. Um, that, that was a big rack because if Fran makes that nine, he puts him to the hill. And Tim's still needing five. Instead, Tim wins the rack. So now it's only a two game lead. Fran needing two games, Tim needing four games, and Tim breaking. He broke him, hit him good, pocketed a ball. One in the side, nice thin cut, but I, actually I don't think he's behind the eight ball. No, he's not. And he plays safe. Did he get behind the three? Oh man, did he line that up? I can't tell. I can't tell if that goes or not. I'd probably get a hit watch here, because that's really tough. And that's exactly what Tim's doing. He's have a hit watch. He's gonna grab Paul Rhoda, who is the tournament director for this tournament. And you know, and he's actually, huh. I, I've actually, I know Tony Robles does this too on close hits. He actually takes out his phone and has a slow motion video camera. And it will, because sometimes, sometimes hits are so close, you need that slow motion camera. So this is going to be a really tough hit. I'm kind of curious myself to see if this goes. Paul says it's a good hit. And Paul is just going to show Tim confirmation. And Tim goes, yeah, I, I know it was a good hit. We're all set. So let's see what Tim does here. Let's see, should I play the two and stun a pop draw? No, he tried to come around for the three and did he leave a shot? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I think Francisco Francisco has got a cut on this two ball. Nice try, but left Tim a shot. You know, it's pretty cool. You know, they got, we got, what, one, two, three, four, five players left. And one of these five guys is going to be walking out with $5,000 and a check with their name on it hanging above the pool tables. This is a $5,000 guaranteed first place tournament the rest of the payouts I believe pays out the, the other payout were second through 16 are based how many players we had I think we had a full field of 64 here so let's see here Tim makes a nice carom shot and he's looking at the two ball he's going to play safe here yeah 
play safe behind the 8-6. Uh, oh yeah, definitely behind the 6. Fran's going to go rail first. One rail. And oh, he almost made that. Instead, he 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 left him no shot. I don't think he even has a real. I don't think he even has a real first here. That was a great attempt by Francisco. And the, the problem with this kick is, you know, you got to hit it, but you actually have to hit it real first because if you hit it too full, you're going right in the pocket with it. And you can't slow roll it because of where the six ball is laying, or on the three ball. So that's exactly what we had to do. Is And he hit it absolutely perfect unless that cue ball rolls behind the six. Doesn't. Nice shot. Yeah, that was a kick that you, you couldn't slow roll it because of where the six ball was laying. You don't want to trap yourself. You make a good hit, but then trap yourself. Sometimes that's all it takes, is just a little bit loss of focus to do that on this table. This is a tighter table than the rest of the room. And six, six, Fran with three balls left. And you hit that pretty good. Fran's got options here. He can either go one rail inside English back up or he can play this the way I like to play it actually depending on depending on the angle looks like he has enough angle to do it it looks like he's going to just come two rails pocket the eight one two rails and he got pretty much perfect on this nine ball And that'll do it for this rack. Francisco goes on the hill. Six to seven. A friend needing one, Tim needing four. I had a pretty good break, but just no reward. Camp dry, Tim comes to the table. And plays a good safety. Kind of ties up the 1-8 a little bit also in the process. friends and I go one rail or two rails on this hit. Could potentially go. Wow, he actually hit the eight ball. Oh, Tim's going to have to capitalize here. 
the one in the corner. And he missed the two ball. Nice shot by Francisco. He made the two in the corner, he's at the three. interesting it's interesting because you know I think he can pocket the five but there's I'm sorry pocket the four there's nothing on the five ball Tim played a safe on the four, and he got behind the eight. Fran going to full cue jump this, and he's looking at the back rail, and he missed the hit. But that 5-9 is still a problem. Let's take a look at the better angle here to look at this. Yeah, that 5-9 is still a problem. I don't know if that 5 plays in the corner, even if he gets on the bottom side of it. Almost got on the bottom side, but it did come up a little bit high. But I actually, yeah, he's trying almost wanted to question it. Um, if this ball doesn't play in the corner, I'd probably hook him, which I think is what he's going to do because he's aiming low and get him behind the nine, or now he went for it. Where is he going to leave a shot? That's. Make a little shot in the corner. Angle's not too bad 
Frank can just make Francisco can just make this five ball come one two rails back up toward the six naturally. Just has to do a lot of up and down. Five one end, six the other end, seven the other end, blah blah blah, and back and forth. But if he keeps getting shaped like this, I mean he's got pretty good shape now where he can just make the six come off the one come off long rail, long rail, six, six um make the six, long rail, long rail, back down to seven ball. Just like so. And he's got a nice angle here where he can just center ball. Make the seven. Come right back down for the eight. Just like that. And it's pretty much a stop out here. I don't think anything but a anything but an earthquake. He's gonna stop this one. That'll do it. Francisco Gabral defeating Tim Perry. For the final score, eight to six. This is Sutton Death in the booth with you guys. Francisco Cabral goes into the finals. And uh, so that leaves four left. Alrighty, so we'll get back to you guys with another match. Enjoy.